Lecture 6, Degeneracy of Rotational Energy Levels For a given level, rotational quantum number is equal to J. It implies that the degeneracy is going to be equal to 2J plus 1 energy states. Hence, the level is 2J plus 1 degenerate. The 2J plus 1 states are only resolved when the field is applied. A magnetic field splits the energy levels to 2J plus 1 states described by the quantum number Mj. Each state has its own Mj. The different values of Mj correspond to the different orientations of the rotating molecule relative to the applied field. The splitting of energy levels by a magnetic field is equivalent to the Zeeman effect we saw sometime in atomic spectroscopy. I is the splitting of electronic energy levels by a field. The total angular momentum is still h over 2 pi square root of open brackets j into j plus 1 close close. But the components along the field is equal to 2 h over 2 pi mj. The generous continued. That is, for j equals 2, the angular momentum will be orientated in five different directions by the magnetic field. They are given here. That one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. The splitting due to an electric field is different. It splits the level into J plus 1 states. The levels from which Mj is greater than 0 are doubly degenerate. The selection rules are still delta J is plus or minus 1 and Mj is equal to 0 or delta J is equal to 1 and Mj is equal to 0 for absorption still holds. The splitting of levels by the electric field into characteristic number of lines in this case is known as the Stark effect. Let us consider absorption line for the transition between J equals 1 to J equals 2. Probably call it absorption band as it is given here. That is absorption plotted against frequency. Diagram A. That a single absorption line is obtained before imposing the field. When an electric field is applied, there is a splitting of the line into two. As you can see them here, that one and that one. And that is figure B. And now transitions can occur between these levels, as shown in figure B. As the field is increased, the splitting increases. That gives figure C here. As you can see, the splitting between these two is much bigger than initially. This is followed by an increase in the shift of the lines. This shift, positive or negative, is measured relative to the position of the line where we had it and had no electric field. As shown in this diagram, that is our initial line without field, and here are the split lines after imposing the field. So delta E is the splitting of that one, and delta E2 is that of that one, of the second one. That is figure D. For linear molecules, this shift depends on moment of inertia i, dipole moment mu naught squared, the square of the dipole moment that is, and on the square of the electric field, eta squared. The stack effect enables us to obtain molecular dipole moments with high precision because the shift delta E can be obtained very accurately. The following relation holds for linear molecules. Delta E 
is proportional to i mu naught squared is eta squared but for symmetrical rotors we have delta e is proportional to mu naught eta this is the most accurate method for obtaining mu naught which provides an insight into the geometric structure of the molecules it provides information on the extent to which a bond is permanently polarized or its percentage ionic character. An insight into the geometry of the molecule, the angle between the bonds, e.g. carbon dioxide, has no dipole moment despite the difference in electronegativity between carbon and oxygen. We can conclude that the molecule is linear. The moments due to the CO bonds, which are present exactly cancel each other by vector addition. On the other hand, water has a dipole moment of 1.85 dBi and must have a triangular structure therefore. Assignment 2. Please have a go at this. A 10 cubed moles per liter absorbs 10% of incident light of a certain wavelength in a cell of one centimeter part length. What concentration of the same solution will be required to absorb 90% of the light in the same cell? Two, estimate the population of CO molecules at room temperature between A, the first and ground vibrational state separated by 25 kilojoules per mole, B, the first and ground rotational state separated by 0.05 kilojoules per mole. Assume RT to be 2.5 kg per mole. Let's look at Beer Lambert's law. According to Beer and Lambert's law, A is equal to log the base 10 I naught over I, which is equal to log the base 10 100 over 90, which is equal to ECL, which is where eta is equal to 10 to the minus 3 times 0 0.01 over open bracket dm squared times moles the minus 1. That therefore means eta is equal to 0 0.04576 over 10 to the minus 4 this meters squared per mole. For the second solution with 90% absorbance, A log to the base 10 over 100 over 10 is equal to 4.5 times C times 0.1 this meters cubed per mole. Therefore, C is equal to 100 over 458 times 0.1 moles per this meter cubed, which is equal to 2.18 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per this meter cubed. Question number two. The population of molecules follows a Boltzmann distribution, therefore, NV1 to NV2, I think it's NJ, should be NJ, exponential EV1 minus EV0 over T, which is equal to exponential minus 25 over 2.5, which is equal to exponential minus 10, which is 4.5 times 10 to minus 5. Therefore, only one in every 500,000 molecules is in the first vibrational state. Okay, it is EV really. B, let us ignore degeneracy first. Therefore, NJ is equal to 1 over NJ equals naught is equal to exponential EJ is equal to 1 to EJ is equal to naught over RT. And when we substitute, we find this is equal to 0 0.98. However, the degeneracy 2.j, 2 2j plus 1 is the degeneracy, so that j is equal to 1 